Daniel, the third chapter, verses 24 and 25. Daniel 3, 24 and 25. And tonight, this account, this story, is about the three Hebrew young men and the fiery furnace. And I know, without a doubt, that this account is well known by all that are here tonight, even the young people. As a young person in Sunday school, this is one of those stories that captured my mind, my thoughts, and my heart. And as an older man today, it continues to hold my interest many years later. It had drama and it had action and it's something that I could relate to like David and Goliath and like Daniel and the lion's den. And as kids, Sunday school teachers teach those things, and those stand out in our mind because we can picture them. But it's the message that God has prepared for us tonight. And there are many lessons that we can take away from this particular passage. But his focus tonight, the focus that God has placed on my heart tonight, is this. There's a fourth man in the fire. There's a fourth man in the fire. And we don't have time to read the entire account, as most of, but most of you know it. But I'd like to set up a brief summary. So here, King Nebuchadnezzar had a golden image made. And he invited many high-level dignitaries and people to come and dedicate this golden image that was made. And he also told the people, when you hear the sound of the music, you're all to bow down to this image. All, no exceptions. And if you didn't, you'd be simply thrown into the fiery furnace. So the music came on, and they all fell and worshipped, except for these three young Hebrew men. And they refused, and, were, and they were thrown into the furnace. And he had ordered it to be seven times hotter than it normally was. So, in an instant, anything thrown in this furnace would be burnt up. And let's pick up our reading there. 3 and 24 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Didn't we cast three men bound, bound into the midst of the fire? He's asking the question. And they answered him and said unto the king, True, O king. They were his witnesses. He wanted to make sure that they had done this. They had thrown three bound men into the furnace, and everyone agreed that that is what happened. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. Four men, not three, four men, and they're loose, no longer bound. Praise God walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, they're not burned at all, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Can we say amen tonight? Amen. Praise God. I love that. These three men, these three young Hebrew men, chose to serve God. They chose to obey God. They chose to be loyal to Him. Not to compromise. And maybe the thought just came to them, I don't know. But maybe the thought came to them, you know what guys? If we don't do this this one time, it's probably gonna be okay. 
We know how we believe. We know how we trust. No! They didn't do that. They knew it was an instant death. But for God, amen? Praise God. <clears throat> the fourth man that has come to save them from this fire due to their loyalty to God. The fourth man that has come into our lives to save us from the fires and the trials in our lives. Isn't that good? Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Question for you. Do we all have fires going on in our lives right now? Amen. Maybe you don't. But if you don't, you're probably going to. Oh, Lord. We all have trials. It's the man, the fourth man, that has come to save us from eternal fire. You thought about that? <clears throat> the fourth man that has come to save us from the fiery trials of life that we'll go through. The man that has come to save us from our sins. Yeah, That's the man. Praise God. Isn't that good? He's speaking of Jesus here. We all have fires in our lives. We all have trials in our lives, do we not? Definitely. Things are going on in our lives. Maybe things are going on with our families. And they seem like a raging fire. We have family members that are maybe heading in the wrong direction. And we don't know how to turn it around except to look to the man. Amen? The man that takes us through these trials. Praise God. We may have giants that we're facing in our lives. Maybe we're facing addictions we can't defeat or overcome. But God is speaking to us very clearly here tonight. Yeah. And he's saying, I will walk with you in the fire that you're going through. Amen? Yeah. He didn't necessarily deliver this, these men from the furnace. They were thrown into the fire. But he delivered them in the furnace. So sometimes it's necessary for us to do what? To go through trials. And when we go through these trials, many times we come out much stronger if we trust in him. Amen? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He never leaves us or forsakes us. Forsakes us. <clears throat> And this story that is told here is not a fairy tale. It's real. It may sound odd, unusual. It may sound impossible. But we have to remember, he's God. And God is saying to us tonight, Hold on. Hold on. I'll walk with you through whatever fire it is you need to go through. Praise God. Do we sometimes feel like quitting? I have. Do we sometimes feel like giving in? Giving up? I know I do. And I have. Sometimes we want to throw in the towel. That's enough. Can't take no more. We have nothing left in the tank. You know, sometimes it's much easier just to quit. But for God. Yeah. Praise God. We might be convinced that we can't win. That we can't overcome. 
that we can't get through the fire. But God is going to be with us in that fire. Thank you, Lord. Maybe we've been holding on for a long time, and it's the same thing, and we're praying, and we're praying, and we're seeking God, and we need a change, and we see no changes. But I would say this, God is saying to us, hold on and trust in me, amen? amen. Praise God. He is God, and I love the word of God. Everything that I read in his word, everything that I read in his word is true. And I believe it with all my heart. I'll take a, a liberty here tonight and say this. I'm just imagining that as these three men are in this fiery furnace and not being burned, and it doesn't say this, but I'm going to take a liberty and say it. They were praising the Lord. Amen? Because that's where we should be. Praising the Lord. When we're going through that fire. And he's upholding us. And he's not allowing us to be burned. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Just like Paul and Silas when they were thrown in prison. At midnight, what was happening? They were praising and shouting and thanking the Lord. They were beaten and mistreated and all those things. But guess what? They were praising the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I believe that God takes much pleasure in showing his great power. In manifesting himself to us. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, holding on in this life is sometimes very difficult. Let's call it what it is. But even in the hottest fires, God is there for us. And he's that fourth man in the fire. I can visualize that in my mind. He's the fourth man in the fire. He's with us. How do we walk in the fiery furnace during a fiery trial? It's, it's not easy to endure. And sometimes we must go through the trial for the glory of God. And sometimes he uses us for his glory. Because what did these young men say? Even if he doesn't save us, we still love him. We still praise him. We still put him on high. Thank you, Lord. Either way, God is with us in the midst of the fiery trial. And that was just touching my heart today as I was going over this in my mind. Hold on. You'll never be alone. Put your trust in the fourth man, Jesus, with all your heart. And as I read and I studied, it came to me that Jesus understood being in the furnace. Jesus, when he was here on earth, he understood being in the furnace. Sure. He was tempted in the wilderness. Yeah. That was a furnace. He understood pressure, the pressure, the responsibility, the stress of the day on himself. He knew the furnace of being rejected and being despised and hated by man, did he not? That was a furnace. His unfair treatment. You see, he never sinned, but he was certainly treated unfairly. Amen? And he knew the furnace of pain and suffering. Think of him on the cross. He knew that pain. He knew that suffering. And he knew the furnace of death. And he experienced all of these things. Praise God. He absolutely understands the 
the furnaces that we're going through, the fiery furnaces that we're going through. And he's in the midst of the furnace with us. I love that tonight because he's standing with me no matter where I have to go, no matter what I have to go through, he's with me. Amen? Yeah. And that's what we have to think on tonight. Praise God. How do we hold on? We must trust everything about him. Amen? Amen? We must grow closer to him. Amen. We must seek his face. We must not listen to Satan's lies. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. No matter what, God will always be with us in the raging, blazing fire that we're going through. The, Lord. the raging, blazing fire that would destroy most. Call on him. Yes. Follow his ways. Trust him implicitly. We sang that song, There's a Way Through. There's a way through. Victory is certain. Does that mean we're going to come out great on this? Not necessarily. We're going to come out the way God desires us to come out. But he will be with us every step of the way. Victory is certain. God's promise is true. There's a way through. There's a way through. Help me out. Jesus, my Savior will never fail you. Isn't that good tonight? Put that song deep down in your heart. There's a way through. Praise God. The hairs of their heads were not singed. What? Their garments were not changed. How does that happen? There was no smell of smoke on them. You know, when I go outside and barbecue, you get the smell of the smoke on you. And it gets in your clothes. And before you go, you have to change all that. There wasn't a bit of these things. Thank you, Lord. And remember what we said in that first verse, or the second verse. They were bound. But here it says, the men were loosed. Can we compare that to ourselves in serving God? He loosens the chains that bind us. Isn't that good? Praise God. They were no longer bound. The ropes burned off, I suppose, but it didn't burn anything else. And they were free. He does that today. Praise God. He takes away the things that bind us. He sets us free. I want to be set free tonight. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 3 and 3 says, But thou, O Lord, are a shield about me. He's our glory. He's the lifter of our heads. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. He brings us joy, gladness. He brings us hope and peace. He walks with us through the fire. And he loosens the chains that bind us. Thank you, Lord. All I can say tonight is thank you, Jesus. There's a new song that the choirs began to sing. I think they sang it once. It's I Trust in God. And one of the lines says, He's been the fourth man in the fire time after time. He's been my fourth man in the fire time after time. He was, he's been in our fires. He's been the fourth man in our fires time after time. We ask him for help, and he walks through the fire with us. Amen. 
I'm so excited about that tonight. Praise God. In Hebrews, the 10th chapter, the 23rd verse, it says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without what? Wavering. For he is faithful that promised. And he has always, always, always been faithful. For that which he's promised. Peter 4.12, and we're going to come to a close, brother and sister, if you would come forward. First Peter 4 and 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to you as if some strange thing happened to you. A fiery trial. We're going to go through fiery trials. But we don't have to go alone. Amen? He's always there. Thank you, Lord. And I want to close with Daniel 3, 28 and 29. Because it just touches my heart. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him. And have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own capital G God. Amen. Therefore, I'll make a decree. Now, he changed this. He changed everything that he said initially because he saw the fourth man. And he said, therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. Now, a little drastic there. But do we hear what he's saying and how he changed? They shall be cut into pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because, and listen to this, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Amen? Can we say amen tonight? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, be encouraged tonight. I'm encouraged tonight. I don't have to go through anything on my own. The fourth man is in the fire with me. Wherever I have to go, the fourth man's in the fire. Praise God. Serve God, follow him, love him, invite him to be the man in the fire with you. It's amazing. There's a way through. Victory is certain. And Jesus will always walk with us in the fire. Amen. May the name of the Lord be praised. Amen.